Amen. I said amen. And amen and amen. You all went on and came out to church on this cold rainy day, didn't you? Looks good. Looks good. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Excellent. Thou art excellent. Excellent is thy name in all the earth. Excellent. Seeing us through a year. Excellent. Giving us a new year. Excellent. Keeping us in our right minds. Excellent, Lord. Saving us from ourselves. Excellent. Is thy name all the earth. Amen. The assignment, part two. In my um, 50 years, almost 51 years now, full-time ministry, there, there, there is, there is, um, there is a principle that I've tried to get across to the congregations that I pastor. It's this. That the Christian life is built on four legs. How many legs? Four legs. Like a chair. Stand solid on four legs. Smitty, I've been teaching that for years. The first leg is prayer. Huh? Could you say amen for prayer? The means whereby we communicate with the divine mind. Now that's an amazing thing to me, Romania, that the mind of God, listen to me, the mind of God reduces itself to my size so I can communicate. Because if God, O'Neill, came on to me with all he's got, <laughs> I'd be overwhelmed. But God chooses to talk my language. Huh? Yes. Prayer. Prayer. We love to pray. Oh, yes. We'll cry out unto God in a minute. Lord, oh, have mercy. Pray in the morning. Pray in the evening. Bible says pray without ceasing. So prayer. We know prayer is a leg. First leg is prayer. What's the first leg? Prayer. Second leg is Bible study. Christians are rooted in the word. Huh? We got texts. Some of us have memorized texts. Stand on those texts. Believe in those texts. And so we study the Bible. Morning, noon, and night. Read the Bible. Quote the Bible. We love the word of God. The word is truly the light into our feet, the lamp to our path. No Christian is going far without the word. Do you agree? So what's the first one? What's the second one? Yeah, we study God's word. Got to do it. The third one is what we're doing now. Worship. <laughs> Have we not worshiped already today? Yes, you hear them folk up here singing? Some of us were standing up, waving our hands, worshiping the Lord, praising His name, exalting the Lord. We love it. And the thing about worship is, you don't have to limit it to the church building. Have you worshiped the Lord in your kitchen? Come on, somebody. Have you worshiped God while driving your car? Huh? Yes, have you worshiped God while you're shopping? Lord, help me not to spend this money. Yes, Lord, yes. Worship God anytime, anywhere. Spouse gets on your nerves. You get ready to say something that you should not say. Better worship God right now. Yes, sir. We believe in it, don't we? What's the first one? What's the second one? What's the third one? There is a fourth leg to that chair. Pastor's going to call it today the broken leg. 
Christian service. Now, 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 we, 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 we believe in prayer. We're going to pray. Can't do nothing. We're going to pray. And we'll grab that Bible. Yes, sir, read Bob. We will grab that Bible. And we'll, 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 we'll worship. Look at us. Cold and rainy. Look at us. Sitting in church. We worship. We believe in that. Some of us even go to prayer meeting. Handful of us show up at prayer meeting. Yes, yeah, all right. Had to kind of get that burr in. Yeah, yeah. yeah we, 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 we'll do the worship thing. Have little, little groups of worship. We like to do that. Come together and we worship the Lord. Call and we worship the Lord. But now this thing about service. See, the theme for 2015 is I serve. What's the theme? I serve. I serve. Pastor's got this burden in his head that, that a lot of lives in the church are still not as strong as they need to be because we're sitting on three legs. Yeah. We got them first three down pat. You can't beat us. But that fourth leg, that fourth leg requires something extra because the fourth leg requires a selflessness. I serve. That means I got to come up out of my own little convenient shell and do the un uncomfortable thing to have that fourth leg. Do you agree? Yeah, you might as well agree because it's the truth. It's the truth. That fourth leg, we, we wrestle with it and, 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 and we'll work it in. We'll work it in sometime. Now, yeah. some of us know that lay activities does not mean go home and take a nap. Some of us actually know that. And the thing that bothers me is, is that that fourth leg, even those of us who are doing it, we actually think we're doing God a favor. We'll even brag about the number of ministries we're on. As if that makes any difference to salvation. And we want to receive credit and adoration. Let the pastor know, hey, I'm on six ministries, five ministries, two ministries. Our key text says, Jesus said to them, Go ye. Now you've heard sermons on go ye before. That ain't the sermon you're going to hear today. No, sir. You're going to find out something today that's so vital to you, it's going to shock you. Because this idea of go ye has a lot more to it than you've thought about. So I want you to go with me through the Bible, and we're going to look at Four go ye texts. How many? We got to find out what the purpose of the fourth leg is. First one, first one, talking to God. Second one, listening to God. Third one, praising God. But what is the fourth one about? Now you say, well, the fourth one is working with God. Not, not, not that's too shallow, too shallow. No, that fourth leg service has got more to do than just working with God. The fourth leg has something to do essential for your salvation. You want to hear about it? Well, you might as well, because that's what I'm preaching on as the subject. Let's see what the Bible says. Come on, Revelation 12. I'm not right. Matthew, Matthew 28. Matthew 28. Revelation 12 is my next sermon. Matthew 28. Matthew 28. Look at this. Look at this, what the Bible's going to lay on us today. We're going to go home talking about this sermon. What? Matthew 28. Now look at it. Look at it. Now we know about verse 19. Go ye therefore and teach. Have you read that before? Yes. Yeah, oh, we admonish know this by heart. Home, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And then we, got, we, we admonish, we love, we love verse 20. Teaching them to observe all things. Yeah, we want everybody to know everything we know. Here's the problem with that text. Watch it in the balcony now. Nobody in the balcony can sleep. You can't sleep on this now. Stay awake in that balcony. Holy Ghost come up there and get you if you go to sleep. <laughs> He's speaking.
speaking these words to the 12 disciples. But here's what shocked me, Sister Warfield, is when I realized the condition of the disciples when he said it. Now let's build up to it. They've been with Christ three and a half years, right? Yeah. Three and a half years. With the real Lord, not the substitute, the real Lord. They ate with the fellow. Slept with him. Yeah, yeah. And they saw him perform miracles. Can you imagine with your own eyeballs seeing Jesus walk on water? Have you heard of such? Can you imagine with your own eyeballs seeing Jesus walk up to the tomb and say, Lazarus, come forth, and the fellow gets up? They saw that. They saw him take a handful of bread, pray on that stuff, and feed 5,000 people. They saw that. When he was crucified, watch me now. Having seen all that, what did they do when he was crucified? Huh? Yeah, they, 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 they left him. They left him. So now you would think, I'm leading you somewhere, you would think, having come up out of the grave, having seen what kind of people he's dealing with, how are you going to say to them people, go anywhere? Are you with me? Let me read it to you. Let me read it to you. Verse 16. Then the 11 disciples, once missing, Judas, went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. Look at verse 17. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but... Read the thing. But... Say it. Read it. But... He is saying... Two people who doubt him go. You're not awake yet. Okay. Got to get with you. Got to get in your head. He's not saying this to a church all high on him, all ready to go, all prayed up. They're standing looking at him and they doubt him. To a doubting church, he says, go. So maybe, uh, 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 here it comes, maybe the fourth leg's function isn't just that we work with Jesus. Maybe the function of the fourth leg is to do something in us that knowing Jesus hasn't done. Why would you tell doubters to go? Because the very act of going and working for Jesus will remove the doubt. Hey! The reason why we still have folk in the church who keep the Sabbath, but really can't explain it, who follow the diet but are afraid to defend it before their friends. They have lots. We have people in the church full of doubts. Why? Because they're praying, they're reading the Bible, they're worshiping. But the thing that brings conviction and deep faith and, 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 and unworthy trust in God is working with God. When you get busy, then your doubts are removed. Because as you see the word of God processing itself through you into other people as you witness the miracles that working for God does in people's lives as you see what working for God can do in you suddenly your life becomes stronger the reason why the church is full of weak Seventh-day Adventists we're not busy we doubt you Lord okay then I know how to fix you go See, I would say to him, well, I can't use you. you got doubts, you know, uh, you, you know, forget the assignment. Christ thinks just the opposite. Since you have doubts, get busy. As you get busy, your doubts will be fixed. But it was worse than that, Mark. Mark. 
Y'all better learn to read this Bible. Mark 16. Now they're a mess. Matthew 25, 20, 26, 56. They, fors- they forsake him and, and flee. Uh, Mark 14, 66, 72. They are all afraid and messed up. Luke 22, 39 to 46. They're hiding. John 18, 1 to 3. They're hiding. They're messed up. They're messed up. John 18, 1 to 3. In fact, they go back. They go back to fishing. They go back to what they were doing before. Jesus has to say to Peter, do you love me more than these fish? These are the people to whom he says go. But it's worse than that. Look at Mark 16. Look at Mark 16. Verse 12. And after that, do you see it? He appeared another in another form unto two of them as they walk. Oh, forget that. Verse 14. Afterward, he appeared unto the eleven. There they are again, same eleven. As they sat at meat. What happens next? Read the text. And upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart because they believed not them which he had seen him after he was risen. First doubts. Now he comes to them and before he sends them, he must fuss at them. Get your rear ends up off this host. Get yourself up off this table. Stop eating. You don't believe, you've not, I'm standing in front of you and you still don't believe. So get up from the meal and go. There it is. Verse 15. He said unto them, go into all the world. People he has to fuss at, who are full of unbelief and hardness of heart, he sends them out with unbelief. He sends them out with hardness of heart. Ladies and gentlemen, let the pastor say it again. If you want to get cured of your maladies, get busy. We're wearing on our knees praying. We pray, Lord, Lord, deliver me from my weaknesses. We read the Bible. We memorize text. We come to church. That doesn't fix you. What fixes you is forgetting about yourself, forgetting about your weaknesses, forgetting about your failures, getting your mind on somebody else, doing what God asks us to do. As you work for others, you get clean. I'm going to say something that's going to bother you, but think with me. See, sometimes all this praying we do is just an excuse for not doing. (laughs) Pastor, let's have an all-night prayer service. Let's pray all night. What about us going out all Sabbath and working in a soup kitchen? Oh, oh, we have to have to be in church on Sabbath. Why? Well, then we quote the text. We know we we know the Bible. The Bible says Luke four sixteen, as his custom was, he's in the synagogue. Didn't say he was there all day. said he dropped by. Come on, somebody. Yes, sir. That's all it says. We use, listen, we use prayer and worship and stuff to hide behind and think because we've prayed and worshiped and we have read the Bible and memorized some text. We have, no, no, no. He said, go. You need to get up. Why? Your heart's hard. Why? You don't believe. Why? You have doubts. So get up and get busy in the mission of the church as you get busy a lot of your questions shall be answered now pastor we want to have a series of bible studies on revelation for the next 30 afternoons for what look I'm serious 
This year is going to be different. It's going to be different. Because what we've been doing ain't working. We're half-baked, half-convicted, because the fourth leg is not fixed. So Jesus says, get up from the table to the eating. They sat at meat. Pass the macaroni and cheese, please. Yeah. And them chopped us are tasting real good. But Jesus said, get up, get up from the table. Put down the carrot juice and go somewhere. I know that's a free translation, but don't, don't look for it in the Greek, but it's close. It's close. The idea is, you know, Advent, we're, we're great. We'll go home after, 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 after dinner, you know. There they are. Eating. Oh, did you hear the pastor today? Yes, yes, give me them green beans. Yeah, he's the pastor preached today. Yeah, please, a small gravy on the sweet potatoes, please. Oh, no, we won't put gravy on the sweet potatoes, yeah. Whatever you put gravy on. Yeah, pass. Yeah. Christ said to them, would you please go? Would you please stop eating and go? This is a good sermon. <laughs> Look at Luke. Look at Luke. Look at Luke. Luke 24. You think Mark is rough. Look at Luke 24. I want you to, get, I want you to see that this text we love so well, Yvonne Smith, go ye therefore, if you really read the text in context, it, 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 it's troubling. They're in doubt. They don't believe. Look at Luke 24. Verse 36. And as they thus speak, having an after Sabbath fellowship, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said unto them, Peace be unto you. <laughs> but they were terrified and affrighted. Suppose that they had seen a spirit. That's what that veggie meat will do to you. <laughs> oh, that salt. <laughs> Don't get me started, y'all. Don't get me started. Yeah, yeah. Now they're seeing spirits. <laughs> look like look like big big Franks. <laughs> Verse thirty eight. Stay with the pastor. Verse thirty eight. And he said unto them, Why are ye troubled? And why do thoughts arise in your hearts? Now remember, these are the people to whom he's going to send. Behold, my hands and my feet. That is, I myself handle me and see me, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones as you see me. They, they don't see folk. <laughs> see, studying Bible, knowing scripture is not enough. They, 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 they've read, they know he's resurrected, they heard he's resurrected, they don't believe that. They see him now, now, now they're looking at Jesus, they don't believe that's him. And when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they yet believed not for joy, and one just said to them, Have you here any meat? Well, they're eating, they're, they're eating again. Every text we find them eating. That's what, that's what God's people will do. We will have a dinner. <laughs> and they gave him a piece of broiled fish. Jesus ate the fish, y'all. <laughs> now, I'm not trying to recommend anything, but sometimes, you know, those of us like us that we're vegans and so forth, we get carried away. The brother ate fish. Yeah. Now, don't y'all get carried away now. My point is, he's got to show them. And so verse 33, and he took it and did eat before them. He joined in the Sabbath supper and said unto them, these are the words which I spake unto you. Now notice, notice, notice. We said one of the four legs did too was studying the Bible. They've heard the word. See, these are the words I spake unto you while I was yet with you that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me then opened he their understanding. They know the Bible. They've heard the Bible. They've not understood the Bible. You see, it's when you get involved in the mission of the church that the scriptures become clearer to you. See? See? And he said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer. No, verse 45. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures, like I'm doing with you today. I'm opening before you passages that you have studied for years and showing you they're given to a group of people 
who need to be busy in order to overcome their weaknesses. They don't believe, they don't trust, they're not following the word, they think they are, but they have a broken leg. The broken leg is they're not going, they're not doing. Starting in February, the pastors of this church will be laying before you every Sabbath an opportunity to become a part of a ministry. Let me make a simple sentence. There are people sitting in this congregation right now who, if they don't change their way of being involved in the church, you're going to be lost. You know, we have these, we know Adventists are greatest slogans. Everyone win one. And we didn't warn that one out. What's the slogan for the year? Everyone win one. Yeah, everyone win one. Come to the church every Sabbath by yourself. Everyone win one. <laughs> Six months of the year gone by. Ain't brought nobody. Ain't, ain't touched nobody. Everyone. Yes, child. What's the matter? Everyone win one. Because we don't see it as vital. We think it's just a gimmick. And we'll applaud for those who bring somebody in. Amen to the baptism. When is the last time you sat in church and somebody got up from beside you that you brought to the church and joined the church? When has that last happened in your life? When's the last time you have given a Bible study to somebody at your workplace or in your neighborhood about this truth? When's the last time you have knocked on a door? You! Not them, you. Thus it is written, verse 46, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. Now watch this. Verse 47 and that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in the name among in, in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem, and ye are and ye are witnesses of these things. You saw this. See, just think about it. Think about the trees, your own conversion story. When God actually touched you, young lady, and you felt different inside. You felt the power of the Holy Ghost in your life. And you knew from that time, Nicole, you wanted to be different. And you could sense and feel the difference in you. Think about that time when you got up in church yourself, walked down this aisle, and took your seat. Pastor De Silva dropped you down in that water. Hallelujah! Brought you up in the newness of life. Think about it. Tell me, how can you sit quiet and not tell somebody, Jesus saves. Je I heard a joyful sound, Jesus saves. How can you be quiet when your life has been turned upside down by the power of the Holy Ghost? Got to tell somebody that my God is able to take anger from me, to take greed from me, to take weakness from me, to take lust from me. I got to tell somebody as a God somewhere who can reach down inside of a sinner and turn him wrong side out. Let me tell you what God can do. And Jesus said, you've done enough eating. Let's get on up. Let's leave the fellowship dinner and hit the streets. That was a weak amen. <laughs> Maybe it's time, Brother Bullard, for these fellowship dinners to be lighter. 
Serve a little salad. <laughs> a little sprinkling of rice and peas. Just a little sprinkling of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make that real light meatloaf. Mm-hmm. Don't cook them green beans so just light so you crunch, crunch when you eat them. Crunch, crunch. Come on, y'all. Yes, sir. And then get up from that table and go out into the streets of Tacoma Park and tell somebody, I know somebody that can take anybody. This church is full of miracles. Some of y'all ought to be dead. You know you ought to be dead. You have no right to be sitting in this church. You've done dumb things, wrong things, long time. And yet God saw you. you got to tell somebody, God took a hold of my hand, walked me through the Red Sea, set my feet on a rock to stay. you got to tell somebody. He said, you knew all this. You're my witnesses. You're sitting there eating fish. My final text. Go to the book of John. Go to the book of John. John, last chapter. After these things, verse 1, John 21, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias, and on, his, on this wise showed he himself. And there were together Simon Peter, Thomas, called Didymus, the twin, and Nathaniel of Cana, Cana in Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee, and two other of his disciples. Simon Peter saith unto them, I go a fishing. Now you got to understand this text in the light of the context, Warfield. When he first called them to service, he said to them, I will make you fishers of. He found them, Charlene. When he found them, they were fishermen of fish. Remember that? Hey, he said, follow me. And you got the Martham brothers. The Bible says they dropped their nets. Followed him. Isn't that something? And for the next three and a half years, they were with him. Now, stay with the pastors. I'm closing out. You see, what the Bible is teaching you is that being with Jesus and being around Jesus does not necessarily ch change you until you become a part of the mission of Jesus. We ain't never heard the kind of sermons they heard. And they forsook him and fled. Okay? But here they are now, three and a half years later, Christ has been crucified and resurrected. And Peter says, well, I'm going back to fishing. I just read it. And then, like donkeys, they say, we also go with thee. Now, hear me, hear me. When Jesus called you into this church, it ain't never going to be legal or acceptable for you to go back where you were. You're different forever. Hey, come on now. Your priorities have changed forever. You can never be the same because Jesus possesses you. So the Holy Ghost is disturbed. They went forth, entered into a ship immediately. What did they catch? Of course. See, when you go back to where you were, the results for you are nothing. The liquor used to please you when you go back to it, nothing. Used to move your hips real good on that floor, but you go back to it now, nothing. 
Break your back now trying to do them dances. Oh. You can't go back. You see, that's the thing about being a believer in Christ. Once he gets you, you can't. Folk, we can't go back. I told the folks this morning, when I was young, I had three goals, three goals in life. I was going to be an engineer, make lots of money, marry a pretty woman. I did one. <laughs> Somebody give God glory. I can't go back. I can't reach back where I was because God has called. I can't engineer. I can't build nothing. But I can sure take this book and work with it and bring somebody to Christ. That's who I am now. I cannot go back. You can't go back. So an Adventist who goes back to the clubs looks like a fool out there. Come back in the church, get baptized. You come in the church, get baptized, take up all that jewelry. Then you go back out there and you put it off like a clown. They didn't catch nothing. Verse 4, look how pitiful they are. And when the morning was come, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Now I want you to hear me. If this church, along with its pastors, does not wake up and get involved in the mission of the church, we're going to lose our ability to know Jesus. Folk, the Adventist church is not a denomination. We don't just come to church and worship the Lord. We are a movement. Hey, somebody say it now. We are a movement. This church was equipped to go forward. That's why we don't need to be too comfortable in church. We are at our best outside. I'm going to say it again. Tacoma Park is at its best outside this sanctuary. This is just a staging place. We don't fight no wars here. We get ready to do battle here. This is not church service. This is church worship. Service is out there. So, here they are. So, when they finally do catch some fish with Jesus, verse 15 Jesus looks at him and says, Peter, lovest thou these, the fish, more than me? It would be a shame to be in the Seventh-day Adventist church as long as some of us have and be lost. And the thing that scares me to death <clears throat> too many of us are being deceived by how much praying we do how much Bible reading we do and how much church attendance we do and we think that's going to save us. There's a fourth leg. What's the fourth leg, y'all? Talk to me, balcony. What's the fourth leg? Yeah, bless you. Pastor loves you. Christian service. Until that leg is fixed in the church. We will continue to have weak Christians, faithless Christians, distracted Christians. The least little thing throws us off balance. And for those of us who are busy, we have to change our attitudes. Your being busy is nothing to boast about or brag about. 
or act like you're doing something special. You're just doing what a Christian's supposed to do. I serve. That's the theme for this year. I serve. What about you? What about you? If I walked up to you at the end of church today and said, what ministry are you in? What would you say? Well, pastor, I'm thinking about it. What did Festus say? Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. He was still lost. So, our dear choir director is going to sing a song, an old hymn, a hymn of commitment. I want you to think about it as she sings these words. I will follow thee, my Savior. I will follow thee, my Savior, wheresoever my lot may be. Where thou glowest, yes, Lord. I will follow. Yes, my Lord, I'll follow thee. I will follow thee, my Savior. Thou didst shed thy blood for me. And though all men should forsake thee, by thy grace I'll follow thee. Just hold this with the next verse. I want you to think about something. This morning from the first sermon I talked about Jesus' commitment. That was part one of the assignment. He took the assignment to become us. The great God of heaven became us. Glory became nothing. King became worse than a slave for us. Why do we have to ask people to join ministries? You should be asking me, what ministry can I join? I'm serious, folk. Why do the pastors have to go around and ask, well, would you become... There's something wrong with that picture. We, we got this thing all turned around. Well, go ahead, next verse. Though the road be rough and thorny, trackless as the foaming sea, Thou hast trod this way yes, before me, and I'll gladly follow thee. Sing the chorus with her. I will follow thee by Sing it, sing it. Thou didst shed thy blood for me. And though all men. Yes, Lord. By thy grace, I'll follow thee. On the Sabbath, third Sabbath of this month, the 17th, I'm going to meet with every person who became a member of this church in 2014 by letter, by baptism, transfer, whatever the case may be. That afternoon, I'm going to hand you a packet that will allow you to sign up for ministry go see remember he, he told them to go when they had doubts see a lot of you a lot of you you, you really do love the lord and and what you but you're you're confound you, you have sincere doubts about your abilities the pastor I, I, i'm not in the choir i can't sing first of all thank god <laughs> not in the choir 
Uh, praise God, you're not in the choir. You know you can't sing, so we're glad you didn't join the choir. <laughs> but we would be happy if you would pass out tracks. Not to sing a note. Walk at somebody's door singing, hand them the track. See, we, we, I can't give Bible studies. Well, that's all right. Can you take a spoon, dip it in a kettle and put it some soup in a bowl and hand it to somebody who's hungry? Can you do that? See, they had doubts. They had doubts. I understand you have doubts. Some of you don't feel talented at all. So I can't talk. You don't have to talk to dip a thing in a Don't take no words. Are you listening to me? Doubts got in their way. Lack of belief got in their way. Some of you will never be able to uh, 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 explain the 2300 days. That's just too deep. That's all right. Ain't nobody going to be saved because they can remember the 2300 day prophecy. When the problems with Advent is now, we're trying to explain stuff that nobody can explain. Just tell people that Jesus loves them. And you love them. If you can quote John 3.16, you got enough Bible for God so loved the world. We're going to sign up all those new folk to ministry. And then I'm coming after you old folk. Been around for years. Now, some of you are bothered by this term. You say, well, doesn't he know I'm involved in ministry? Well, I know some of you are. Though it's time for you to question why you're involved. See, many people are using involvement in the church to lift their own self-esteem and status. It's not about you. It's about Jesus. Give me another verse. Though to Jordan's rolling billows, cold and deep thou leadest me, thou hast crossed the ways before me, and I still will follow Let's stand thee. together and sing that chorus, come on. I, I will, will follow. By thy grace, I'll follow. The course again, course again, course again. I will follow thee, my Savior. Thou didst shed thy blood for me, and though all should forsake thee, by thy grace. I'll follow thee. We need to pray, but you're too tall. You're too tall. Let's kneel as we pray. Now, Lord. If all of us right now were flat on our face, we'd still be too tall. This planet is the trash can of the universe. Nobody comes here but angels. And they stay unseen. But you came. Mm! And you let us all see you slept with us, ate with us, cried with us, died for us. The sermon is entitled, The Assignment Part 2. Part 1 this morning, Christ's Assignment to Us. Part 2, Christ's Assignment for Us. And all I've said to this wonderful congregation, there's a fourth leg 
Yeah, we're going to keep on praying now. We ain't going to stop that. We're going to keep on reading the Bible. We're not going to stop that. And we're sure going to keep on coming to church. But we're going to fix that fourth leg. We want it to become almost an embarrassment for a person to be a member of Tacoma Park Church and not be involved in the ministry. We, w- we want people to be almost ashamed to say, well, I'm not in the ministry. We want you to whisper it. Don't say it out loud. Because that don't work here. So Lord, it's me and Pastor Warfield and Pastor Taylor and Pastor Daniels and all the others who'll be preaching, Pastor Taft, work on this thing this month and then February start signing folk up. Lord, I'd like for you to cheer me up. Maybe some folk will come. They won't, they won't wait till we make an appeal. Lord, I don't need no appeal. Pastor, here I am. I understand you got 28 ministries. Show me what they are. I'm ready to go. Folks stepping up on their own for the master. I will follow thee, my savior. So I'm making no appeal today, Lord. No appeal. No need for an appeal today. We done made the appeal. The only appeal today is to join you in service. (laughs) That's the appeal. That's for everybody. But for that soul today who wanted to say yes to Jesus, I'll be standing back there in the lobby. You can say yes back there. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the assignment that's designed to save my soul. In Jesus' name. And the people said, Amen. Please be seated.